chapter eight, section eight, and the title is Factoring by Grouping, our learning objective. is to factor higher degree polynomials by group. We've just been doing quadratics, and then in this case, we are going to um, go even higher. Uh, we want to find the common element, then factor it out. So we touched a little bit on this yesterday. If you look at our sample equation, what is the factor form of 3n to the third? minus 12n squared plus 2n minus 8. You guys have to be okay sometimes not knowing if you're going in the right direction, but trying something. Factoring a lot of times is about trying. So are you guys, look me in my eyes, are you okay with trying to factor something Realizing it's not working and trying to factor something else. You guys okay with that? Can you emotionally handle having to start over again? You guys do that? Okay, because that's how you know you're going to be math mature. When you can go, oh, I'm doing the wrong thing. I'm going to restart, do it fresh, try, try a new route. Because you know in math there's a bunch of different ways to do stuff. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's wrong. And be emotionally okay. Especially Algebra 1, a little like, mm, you know, where you don't feel quite confident on the material. You guys got to be okay restarting and trying again. That's going to make you successful in life, not only in math. When you don't, when at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Did I ever heard that one? They're looking at me like they've never heard that one for the work. Does it ever that one's giving me Okay. So we're gonna look at our expression here. And we're looking at each element. I have three n to the third, I have twelve n squared, I have two n and I have a minus eight. So in this case, because I know three and twelve have a same factor. What goes into 3 that also goes into 12? What factor? Three. 3. And I know 2 and 8 don't have that common factor of 3. So here's what we're doing. We're finding <coughs> the common elements and then factoring them out. So I'm going to look at this first one. And I'm going to group it like this. So go ahead and put the parentheses around. So I'm just going to pull this out and take a look at only 3n to the third minus 12n squared. Just looking at this little guy here. Because we've established we can take a 3 out. So I'm going to break it down to prime factors. This is the same as 3 times n times n times n. And this is the same as 2 times 2 times 3 times n times n. Okay, let's identify what they have in common. Thankfully, they have both have this 3 in common. What else do they have in common? An n and an n. Oh, but they got one more n to give. So we can take out a 3n squared. And the reason I did it like this is because I wanted you guys, I want you to see what's left after we take out the 3n squared. So here's the 3, here's the n squared, and then here I'm left with just the n and the minus sign. And what is 2 times 2? A full 4. Okay, so I got that. Now let's deal with this 2n minus 8. So 
So let's go, this is 2 times m, and this is 2 times 2 times 2. Oops, I'm easier. So, what do we have in common between 2n and 2 times 2 times 2? Heck yeah, the 2's. 2 and a 2. So we're going to take the 2 out. And we're going to be left with an n, a minus sign, and 2 times 2 is 4. Ba -ho -ho. Do you guys see what's in common between this guy here and this guy here? Do you see, what do these two guys have in common? An n minus 4. So we are going to move this down so I can have some room to work. So I'm going to rewrite these two items. So I've got 3n squared, n minus 4, and it's actually together with a plus, so we're going to go plus, 2 times n minus 4. Okay, here goes the highlight again. Highlight what they have in common. Here's what they have in common. We're going to take that and put it out front. And then we're going to write what's left. And here, I have a 3n squared. And here, I have a plus 2. That is factory and by group. All right, so let's see if we got this. We are going to tackle 8t to the third plus 14t squared plus 20t, plus 35. And I'm looking right now, I think I'm gonna group these just as they stand, because 20 and 35 have a factor of five, and eight and 14 have a factor of oh, two. But, wait, hold on, now that I'm talking it through. Let's do something correct. 14 and 35 have a factor of seven. seven. So let's do those together. And eight and 20 have a factor of four. So let's do those together. Let's, um, we'll combine our eight T to the third and our 20 T with our 14 t squared. If it doesn't work out, we can always go back and resection. It is okay. All right, so let's take a look at these guys. Um, if I divvy eight up, he is two times two times two. 20 is four times five or two times two times five. So this gets to be uh, three twos and three t's. Two twos and a five and a t. All right, so let's highlight the commons. When you guys get good at this, you won't have to highlight anymore. Uh, they have a two. A two, another two, yay. There's our four that we talked about earlier. A T and a T. I'm at a T, so I can't go get these guys. So this guy really is four T on the outside and a two T squared here, plus sign, and a five here. Yay! Let's go do this guy. 14 is 2 times 7. 35 is 5 times 7. 
So 14t squared is 2 times 7 times t times t, and 35 is 5 times 7. I like the ones we got in common, 7, and that's it, just the 7. So this is, take out the 7, and I'm left with 2t squared plus 5. All right. Now, everything's all factory. We group D, we factory. <coughs> now we got to highlight what's in common. What do these two guys have in common? Let's highlight it. And I do believe, you guys, on your standardized testing, I do believe there is a highlighter tool. And I know definitely in your textbook there's a highlighter tool that you can use while you're taking notes. So, using the highlight method to help you the way we're doing it here is going to help you on your testing and yay. make you better human beings. Okay, so we're going to take out what we have in common and write down what's left. So I've got a 4t and I got a plus 7. This up. What is the factored form of 4q to the 4th minus 8q to the 3rd plus 12q squared minus 24q? Now I'm seeing something about these guys that before I even start, they have a common factor. 2 and 4, and 6, wait, no, Q. Um. So because I see the family call, I'm going to break these all up real quick. So 4 is 2 times 2, and then 4 Qs. 8 is 3 twos, and he's got 3 Qs that are hanging out with him. 12 is 4 times 3, and we know 4 is 2 times 2, and he's got 2 Qs, and 24, yeah, 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 he is 4 times 6, or 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, Whoa. minus 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, and a Q. All right. Sometimes they're gonna we're gonna have to factor before we even factor. So if we find that they have stuff in common, so I know they have a two and another two and a Q. And then I'm out. No other repeating guys. So let's take that out to the front. I got a 4Q out front. I got three Qs here, Q to the third. Got a minus sign. I got a two and a Q squared. I've got a three and a Q. And I've got a six. All right. We have to see who gets to go together. I say I want. I'm thinking I want. This has a bunch of Qs in it, and I want to buddy him up with something with another Q. My option here is I got a three in here, and I got a three inside here. So I think I'm gonna group it just as it stands. So in here, I'm going to go here, 
and here. Group it like that. Each one has a minus, so I think it'll factor nicely. Okay, so I'm just taking what's in here, my Q to the third, and we're going to break it up. So this is Q Bunch of cubes. Put this down. Mama needs room to work. Alright. So I've got a Q and I actually have two of them. So that's going to come out front and be Q squared. And on the inside I'm going to left, be left with Q minus 2. All right, so let's take care of this one. He has a 3 and a Q and a 2 times 3. Stay organized. If you guys, if we don't stay organized, we're in trouble. This has a 3 in common. So we take that 3. I'm just rewriting this plus right here. We take that 3, put it on the outside, and I have a Q minus 2. All right, what do we have in common here? Q minus 2. So let's highlight it and take it out. So I'm going to put Q minus 2 out front. Put what I have left in here. And oh, don't forget about this guy. We took out a 4Q. And he goes right on to the Let's check my answer because I did. All right, each one. 4Q, Q squared plus 3, check. And a Q minus 2, check. Um, I want to apologize. We're going to skip this because I did promise that there's two more. I think we get the, a good gist. Um, I do have one that I want to make sure that you guys see. I forgot I had another page. Um, so we're going to skip that last one and do this one with the rectangular prism. A rectangular prism has a volume of 60x cubed plus 34x squared plus 4x. What expressions can represent the dimensions of the prism? Use factory. Anytime. I get a chance to draw a picture. It's happening. So I love drawing prisms, so let's draw a little prism just for fun. And its volume is boy. times width times height, in case you forgot. Alright, so let's do some factoring. We know 60, I know that's 6 times 10, I know 6 is 2 times 3, and 10 is 2 times 5, so I know 60 is 2 twos, a 3, a 5, and then I have 3 x's going on right there. 34 is 2 times 17. So 2 and a 17 and an x and an x. And 4, I don't need to write that down, that's 2 times 2 times x. So let's highlight what we got in common. Let's go pink this time. Everybody got a 2. Everybody's got a 2. Everybody's got a 2. Everybody's got an x. Everybody's got an x. Everybody's got an X, and now I'm out of commonalities. So let's rewrite this. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30, so this is 30 X squared. Got a plus. 
17, he's all by himself now, but thankfully he's got an ex to hang out with him, and just the two is left. And then the two X's out front. Oh, snap. So we did this yesterday, right? Where we had to factor out the quadratic. So we want to take this 30X squared. and factor him out. So is there a way we can do it by, no, there's no way we can do it by grouping. Okay, so what, this two, I can, um, breaks up into two times one. So my second guy either has to be a two or a one. I know that for sure. 30's a little trickier. I can go one and 30, four, six and five, or, 2 and 15, but I want to make sure my middle one um, adds up to be 17. So let's try a couple. This down. Need some room to work. If we do this and it doesn't work out, are you guys okay emotionally? All right, so let's split our 30 into a 5x and a 6x. We'll split our 2 into 2 and 1, and then we'll do a little test. Because if we get this right, this is the length, this is the width, and this is the height. So the reason we're factoring is so we can find length, width, and height, that when we multiply it together, will give us the volume we want. So we're going to test it, and we go, I like the foil. 5 times 6 is 30x squared. 5x times 1 is 5x. 2 times 6x is 12x. 2 times 1 is 2. When I combine my like terms, I get 30x squared plus 17x plus 2. And that is what I have up here. So, I know that, more highlighting, I know, it's so awesome. This is my correct answer. That my length is 2x, my width is 5x plus 2, and that my height is 6x plus 1. And our summary we're factoring polynomials, guess what? When your book says take note, we are going to take note. Um, factor out the greatest common factor. The polynomial has two terms or three terms. Look for the difference of two squares. A perfect square trinomial or a pair of binomial factors. We did all that yesterday. If the polynomial has four or more terms, group terms and factor to find a common binomial factors. As a final check, make sure there are no common factors other than one.